Installing the inlet tube. If the inlet tube was packaged with the O-ring installed, remove the O-ring at this time. Insert the inlet tube into the upper tube until the upper tube seats against the flange on the inlet tube. Ensure that the polypack is inserted evenly and stays in the inlet tube groove. 71SO Tool Procedure There are two types of 71SO tools for securing the inlet tube to the upper tube. The 71SO Tool or the 71SO Tool C. The first thing you need to do is determine which tool you're using. The 71SO Tool was the original tool designed for this installation. This tool is no longer provided by OPW. However, if you're using one of the original 71SO tools, you'll need to refer to page 8 of the 71SO Installation Instruction Booklet, H15524PA, for procedures. If you're using the 71SO Tool C, you'll first remove the plastic bags from the 71SO Tool C box. You can also refer to the instructions on page 9 in the installation booklet. Remove the drill bit located in the plastic bag. The drill bit has a depth collar already installed on it. The depth of this depth collar is preset at the factory, but it should be verified with the use of a tape measure or calipers. The dimension for the 71SO Tool C should be between 1 and 3 16 inches and 1 and a quarter inches. If the depth collar is not set at the correct position, you must adjust the collar prior to drilling. Make sure the set screw securing the depth collar is tight before drilling. Do not use this dimension if you're using a 71SO tool. For the correct depth collar dimension for the 71SO tool, refer to page 8 of the installation instruction booklet. Next, remove the 71SO tool C from the box. Retrieve the thumb screw from the plastic bag and install this into the pre-drilled hole in the leg of the 71SO Tool C as shown. Do not run the thumb screw all the way in. You will tighten this down once the tool has been placed on the 71SO tube. Next, align the slot on the 71SO Tool C with the key located on the inside of the inlet tube. Insert the tool by sliding it over the slot. Ensure that the tool seats flat against the top of the inlet tube. With the 71SO Tool C fully seated, hand tighten the thumb screw against the upper drop tube to prevent vertical movement of the tool during drilling. Drilling the holes. With the inlet tube and 71SO Tool C in place, carefully drill a 3 16th inch diameter hole in the upper drop tube using the 71SO Tool C as the guide. With the drill stop in the proper position, between 1 and 3 16 inches and 1 and a quarter inch depth, the bit will bottom out against the tool after the bit has drilled through the upper drop tube. You should drill each hole from the 12 o'clock position. Carefully drill all three holes ensuring that the holes are being drilled true and straight. After all three holes have been drilled, loosen the thumb screw and carefully remove the 71SO Tool C. Be careful not to disturb the orientation of the inlet tube as you remove the 71SO Tool C. Next, with the punch provided, you will dimple the drill holes in the upper tube to create a countersink for the screw heads. First, place the end of the upper tube over the edge of a solid surface to avoid damaging the inlet tube lip extending out the end of the upper tube. Remove the dimpling punch from the plastic bag. Align the tip of the punch with the drill hole and dimple the upper tube by striking the punch with a hammer until the upper tube is formed into a countersunk hole. Make sure that the dimple is deep enough so the screw head, once tightened, fully seats flush with the surface of the drop tube. After punching, remove any metal chips. Note: Before dimpling the other two holes, you must first install a screw in this first hole. This is a critically important step. From the installation assembly kit, retrieve the first tap-tight screw. Use only the tap-tight screws supplied with the unit. Apply black molly grease to the screw threads. Insert the screw into the hole. Begin the screw with a Phillips head screwdriver. Once secure, using a torque wrench with a Phillips head attachment, seat the screw to a minimum of 20 inch pounds and a maximum of 30 inch pounds. Do not over tighten. 
Make sure the screw head is flush with the surface of the drop tube. Follow this same procedure for the remaining two screws. Once all three screws are in place, the upper tube assembly process is complete. Lower tube assembly. Place the valve body casting in a vise. Only clamp to the valve casting to prevent damage to the float and tubes. Remove the thread protector on the lower valve assembly to expose the mail threads and to inspect the o-ring that provides the seal. Next, inspect the threads on the lower tube assembly and thoroughly clean the threads with acetone. Apply black moly grease to the lower tube o-ring and body threads. Make sure the coverage is completely around the o-ring. Thread the lower tube onto the valve body until the lower tube bottoms out on the valve body. The lower tube should entirely cover the o-ring on the valve body. The tube can be tightened by hand or with a strap wrench. If a strap wrench is used, position it on the threaded insert portion of the lower tube to prevent damage to the tube. Pressure testing the valve before installing. Before installing the valve in the tank, a pressure test should be performed on the valve to check for vapor tightness. There are a variety of test methods available. The test you see on this video is just one particular method using pressurized air. Seal off both ends of the tubes. Apply a maximum of 10 inches of water column or one-third PSI air pressure. If pressure does not hold and a leak can be located with a soap solution, do not install the valve. Send the valve back to OPW for warranty evaluation. Caution: Do not overpressurize. Excessive pressure can damage the valve. Note: According to Phase 1 Vapor Recovery Performance Standards and Specifications (TP-201.1D), the standard specification requirement for pressure integrity of drop tubes with overfill prevention leak rate must be less than or equal to 0.17 CFH at 2 inches of water. Important: Under no conditions exceed 10 inches of water column or one-third PSI air pressure when performing this test. Measurement for the length of bottom drop tube prior to cutting. Using a tape measure, Measure the distance from the top of the face seal adapter in the spill container to the bottom of the tank. Cutting the lower drop tube. Apply the measurement for dimension B to the 71SO assembly by beginning your measurement at the underside of the inlet tube flange. Place a mark on the lower drop tube equal to dimension B. From this mark, subtract 6 inches, dimension B minus 6 inches. This mark on the tube will indicate where you should begin your cut. Cut in the direction of the bottom of the tube at a 45 degree angle or per local codes or requirements. File off all sharp edges or burrs. Remove all shavings and chips out of the cut end of the tube. Do not remove chips by dumping them through the valve body. At this time, as an option, you can install the OPW tank bottom protector on the lower drop tube. Refer to the installation instruction document H14977PA supplied with the tank bottom protector. Prepare the fill riser for valve insertion. Inspect the riser pipe for any foreign material. Remove any tank relining overspray or internal burrs. Failure to have an unobstructed riser pipe may prevent proper installation and or operation of the valve thoroughly clean top of riser pipe. Inserting the drop tube. Retrieve the upper o-ring gasket from the installation kit and install it under the flange on the inlet tube. Remove the elastic band securing the float to the valve body. Holding the float securely against the valve body, slowly insert the drop tube into the riser pipe. Do not force the valve into the riser pipe. If any obstructions or foreign material interferes with the smooth insertion of the valve, the riser pipe must be cleared. Insert the drop tube all the way into the tank until the flange and gasket seat onto the top of the face seal adapter. The float will swing out into the operating position as it passes into the tank. Look down into the tube and align the deflector with the length of the tank. 
This will ensure the orientation of the float is aligned along the length of the tank. The float must be axial with the dimension of the tank to ensure the float does not hit on the side wall of the tank during operation. Note, no obstruction in the tank can be within 14 inches of the center of the riser pipe or the valve will not operate properly. Locking the valve in place. It's important to note that all 4-inch NPT connections are torqued progressively lower, beginning with the highest values at the tank riser connection on the tank and getting progressively lower at the adapter. Install the OPW jack screw kit prior to installing the 4-inch NPT nipple to lock the valve in place. First, verify that you're installing the proper jack screw. The 61 JSK-4410 is for use on composite base spill containers. The 61 JSK-44CB is for use on cast iron base spill containers. This video demonstrates installation of the 61 JSK-4410 in a composite base spill container. Refer to the OPW Jack Screw Kit Installation Instruction Document H1528-9M for complete installation details. First, install the cage assembly. Next, install the top plate assembly with the Allen head bolts backed out to allow the top assembly to sit flush on the top of the cage assembly. Next, apply the proper pipe dope to the 4-inch NPT nipple for sealant and thread the nipple into the riser by hand. Thread an OPW torque cap part number OPWTC-400 onto the nipple. Once installed, using an OPW61SA tool, tighten the 4-inch nipple to the appropriate torque requirement, 125 foot-pounds minimum to 250 foot-pounds maximum. The shaft of the OPW61SA tool can be removed to expose a hex head bolt designed to accommodate a torque wrench socket so a torque wrench can be applied and the required torque can be achieved. Once the internal nipple has been properly torqued to the tank riser pipe, remove the TC400 torque cap. Next, using an Allen head bit attached to a ratchet, tighten the three Allen head screws of the jack screw top plate inside the nipple. Tighten the screws until the top plate comes into contact with the nipple. Once the screws are tight, Using a torque wrench, the screws should be tightened evenly to a torque setting of 3.5 foot-pounds minimum to 5 pounds maximum, or 42 inch-pounds to 60 inch-pounds. Installing the swivel adapter. Refer to installation instruction document H12712PA for proper installation of the OPW61SALP swivel adapter. Apply the proper pipe dope to the OPW61SALP rotatable swivel adapter for sealant and thread the adapter onto the nipple. Once installed, using an OPW61SA tool, tighten the adapter to the appropriate torque requirement. The shaft of the OPW61SA tool can be removed to expose a hex head bolt designed to accommodate a torque wrench socket so a torque wrench can be applied. This to achieve the torque specification of 90 foot-pounds minimum to 110 foot-pounds maximum. Installing the warning plate. Bend the three warning plate ears down and slide the tie wrap over the warning plate ears. Position the plate against the riser pipe approximately one inch below the adapter. Tighten the tie wrap securely. Attach the OPW cap either 634TT or 634LPC and the valve is now fully installed and ready for operation.